Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. We will continue today with this Bible study, but before we do that, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. My brother, Pastor, uh, Brother Patrick Young, please. Father in heaven, we are living in serious times, and we need your help to understand the prophecies of Revelation better than we do, not only to understand them, but to apply the light in thy word to our lives Amen. so that we can be prepared for Christ's second coming. Please Amen. bless with your Holy Spirit Amen. to and to uh, each one here and to those who are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We have been coming to already uh, with, along with our friends at large. And, and I would like to say I praise God. This message is being heard not only throughout North America, but into 75% of the globe. And I, I praise God for that, of course, through radio, televisions, you know, and, and of course we try to do newspapers, like uh, we've been doing the, the, the New York Times. We were talking in previous program how, you know, this power is going to be come again, a religious and political power. And... Um, in the New York Times, we put a full page ad, September 26th. And then uh, that was when the Pope came to North America. And um, on the front page, by the way, they have. And then right next to our, our full page ad that we put, I oh, know, if in the camera, they will be able to see it in there. But if you notice, the Pope was addressing the United Nations at that time. Mm -hmm. We were given a message of warning at that time to the people. Now, why I'm mentioning this? If the Reformation, if the Reformers would keep up with the calling that Jesus was giving to them, there is no doubt in our mind that they would be united with people like us waking up the people, preparing the people for the second coming. And I want, Pastor Barry, on the book of Revelation, because we we're dealing with a period of, in the Bible it's called Sardis, you know, the Reformation, or up right after the Reformation. Okay? What was the problem with them? On verse, chapter 3, verse 2. Okay, do you want to read it and make your comments, please? And it says, be watchful. And strengthen the things that are ready to die. Mm -hmm. I have not found thy works perfect before mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting to know that, remember, the word Sardis means red ones. Mm -hmm. And these are very interesting. Red can represent two things in Scripture. It can represent sin, mm -hmm. or it can also represent blood. But red ones indicates a condition too where we had some who were, who through the blood of Jesus had made reform mm -hmm. and others who had began to slacken their reform and actually go back into sin on mm -hmm. formalism, worldliness, mm -hmm. all right? During this period, the word Sardis was, a, Sardis was a luxurious city in Asia Minor. The capital was Lydia. Uh, Lydia means rich. Mm -hmm. This was a time when the church was no longer being persecuted but she was entering this uh, realm of prosperity. Mm. But the most dangerous thing to spirituality is prosperity. And we know that in the history of Solomon. Physical Phys prosperity. Physical prosperity mm. can weaken the church more than even a persecuting power. Mm. It can also weaken the power of the church and the effectiveness of the Holy Ghost in the life. So it says here, he that has the seven stars, seven spirits of God. We find out the seven spirits of God is dealing with the work of the Holy Spirit. Remember in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, where we left off, giving you that point? Right. It says here in Revelation 1, 5, Patrick, read it for me, please. Revelation 1, uh -huh. 5, 
-hmm. and from Jesus Christ, well, I'll read the second part, mm -hmm. um, and the, let's see, um, oh, that's verse 4, I think you want, and from mm -hmm. the seven spirits mm -hmm. which are before his throne. Well, seven spirits are before his throne. Now, the question was, right briefly, does God have seven spirits? Because this church has a name that liveth and is dead. Right. Name means that there, Second Second Timothy 3, 5 says, having the form of godness, but denying the what? Power. The power. Though. Now, what power do we deny? Acts chapter 1, verse 8 tells us, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Right. So this church is lacking the, the Spirit of God or the Holy Ghost in the life of the believer. Also, Revelation, or Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation from sin. That's right. So that, and the, only the power of the Holy Spirit can give you that victory mm -hmm. over the sin. Well, but notice very carefully something else, though. The Bible brings out one other thing. Does God have seven spirits? Why does the Bible say seven spirits? Perfection. Because remember, the gospel, the, 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 mess, the message of the seven churches are in seven different ages of the church. Right. The Holy Spirit is Christ's representative on earth. He is the actual vicar of Christ. Right, Amen. Not the Pope of Rome. That's but right. <laughs> Christ is the, Christ's Holy Spirit is the vicar of Christ on earth. His uh -huh. personal representative. So, so if Satan can get people to believe that the Holy Spirit is not a person, but just a power and influence, then you've got... You've got the, you've got the Pope as being the vicar <laughs> of Christ on earth. A counterfeit. It represents a counterfeit, right. But now, as a result of that, I want you to notice something very carefully. Look at Revelation chapter 2 with me. And I want you to read Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Right quick. 2, 7. Mm -hmm. Okay. Revelation 2, 7. Uh, he who has an ear, let him, let him hear what the Spirit, in capital, uh -huh. Spirit says to the churches. Okay, to the churches. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to read Revelation 2, uh, 13. Uh, 2.11. Okay. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right. Now, I want you to go back and read again with me. Verse 2.17. 2.17. Mm -hmm. okay. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, go with me again and read Revelation chapter 2, verse 29. Uh, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay. Go to me and read Revelation chapter 2, verse... Chapter seven. Three. Chapter three, verse seven. Okay. Verse six. Verse six. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, right. go with me again and read Revelation three, and look here at verse thirteen. Yeah. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And now let's go to Revelation three twenty-two. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. How many times did you read that? Seven. 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 So the seven spirits of God represents the Holy Spirit working in seven different ages of the church. And to every church, the Holy Spirit, who is Christ represented on earth, says, He did have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says so, unto the churches. Not a pope or not a, pope. a religious not, organization. Not a organization or a, or a preacher for that matter. Right, right, right. But right. what the Spirit says to the church, because all scripture is given by what? inspiration of God. Right. So what's happening in church of Phil what's happening in the church of Sardis? Right. They are no longer they they are turning away from the inspiration of the spirit of God and its formalism and prosperity and worldly thinking and sayings of men that are being exalted in its place. Right. And as a result, they they are failing to strengthen the things that are ready to die that remain. The things that are ready to die that was the part that gave them actually strength at one time right. was the teachings of salvation, right. righteous, righteous, righteousness, righteousness and by righteous faith. by faith, right. and the, and that there and and other teachings that dealt with basic salvational issues at first, mm. because additional light is about to shine right. on the movement of the Protestant Reformation coming out from the Dark Ages, coming up into the Church of Philadelphia, and our next mm. when we get into that study. Right, right, right. But now the major one, of the major issues here is the, is the issue of salvation and righteousness. And salvation and righteousness are the things that strengthen them, but now they're ready to die, and that's the things that re actually is to remain. And that's because uh, Protestantism has taught that the law is done away with. Yeah, that's right. Right, right. And that teaching has just, and they've kept other Catholic teachings like a union of church and state, and persecuting those, like during the early days of the colonial America, 
uh, they had the same spirit of persecution against those that didn't believe just like they did. Not only that, they also, they also was teaching things like um, once saved, always saved. Right. Salvation, the plan of salvation does not teach you once saved, always saved. Right. But this is another thing that was coming in that was destroying the, the teachings of the scriptures, undermining the very teachings of Christ. How about keeping the teachings of the Roman church, like uh, the sanctity of Sunday, right. the immortality Absolutely. of the souls? Yes. Because all those things. the sanctity of Sunday is against the righteousness of God. Right. It goes against That's right. the commandments of God. That's right. R God in Psalms 119, God in his 172. E when a person accepts Jesus and they don't keep the Sabbath, God in his mercy brings them to a conversion. Hmm. But, in his, but in also in his mercy, he also brings truth to them eventually right. that will help them see if they will pick up the scriptures what day he sanctified and blessed. But too many are dependent upon their ministers and too many are following traditions to pick up the word of God and to squarely understand that they must study to show themselves approved unto God. Isn't that maybe why in Revelation 17 it is speak about a church mother and daughters? Mothers and daughters, right. Wow. Not only that, the Bible said in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right, right. Most people accept Jesus in many of the churches today, but they do not, they do not understand the Bible. Right. So they just go along with whatever the minister says. That's the destruction of lack of knowledge. And many times the ministers lead them away from the law of God. Mm -hmm. Others are going to churches looking for miracle working, healing power. And therefore they're looking for some miracle, uh, different things. And that's why some are looking for ecstatic tongues. Right. And they say this is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. Right. When the evidence of the Holy Ghost is a transformed character. Amen. There's true. a reason why people are not knowledgeable about the Bible and that is because Protestantisms have their creeds and the thought that you don't have to study the Bible because it's already been studied. We've written out the creeds. You just have to believe them. Right. And, and the Holy Spirit will guide you. You know, if the Holy Spirit doesn't teach you or convince you, that doesn't mean that it's not the truth. But every truth must be tested by the Word of God. Isn't that true? That's right. Right? That's right. So, uh, let's move on. Now, we let can... me say why it says ready to die. What's the opposite of death? Life. Life. Oh. Go with me to Job chapter 33, verse 4 for a moment. Job 33, 4. And then also John 6, 63. Now, I want to show you why, again, the church is becoming formal and they're turning away from the scriptures and from the solid teachings of the Bible. Okay. Job 33, verse 4 says, uh -huh. But the, the Spirit of God hath made me and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me what? Life. So, so if the church, if things are, if the church is, has a name that are, and they're dead, and, they're thing, and the things in church are ready to die, what's going on? They're, they're lacking of the Holy Spirit. They're lacking the breath of God. The quickening the, the spirit. Quickening spirit the, the revival, reviving spirit of the Holy Spirit from yeah. the Scriptures. L let's hold it right there. Just listen to this for one second. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. My brother Patrick, John chapter 6, verse 63. We're okay. dealing, we're going to keep dealing with this uh, situation on the Reformation churches. John 6, 63. Yeah. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The mm -hmm. flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So we see so, that the issue here is that they're dead because they're lacking the power of the spirit of God. But the Spirit of God unto what now? This is something because 
by this time, if the church doesn't come out of this condition, they're going to go into a falling condition, which we're going to find out later. Wow. And this is very important. But let's go back. Go with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 10. Romans 8, 10. Notice what it says here in Romans 8, 10. The Bible says here, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So what is the church dying from? The lack of the things that remain that they failing to hold strengthen strengthen spirit filled righteousness spirit filled righteousness which is sal the salvation issue that were taught from the reformation mm -hmm. and the righteousness of Christ which leads them not to look to themselves and merit themselves in any merit they have done but look to Christ and his righteousness knowing there's the spirit of God working in them both to will and do of his good pleasure it seems like the gospel truth of receiving the spirit <clears throat> of God and letting him dwell in us and his righteousness coming out in our life was replaced by just believe in Jesus and that's it. Yes. Just a mental ascent. Because remember, the dead know nothing, hear nothing, see nothing. So if the church is ready to die, then what's happening is simply this. They stopped increasing in their understanding. They are dead because they don't have the spirit. The spirit is life because of its righteousness. So the reason the church is dead is because they don't have the experience of Christ's righteousness. James 2.26 says, the body without the spirit is dead. Hmm. So faith without works is dead also. Hmm. They claim to have faith, but they didn't have any works to follow. Look at Ephesians 4.22. Ephesians 4.22. Okay, Ephesians 4.22 says mm -hmm. that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Okay. And be renewed. Be renewed verse how? Be renewed how? In the spirit of your mind. In the spirit, it says, be renewed, in the, it says, in the new, on the new man, yeah. which is after God, created in what? Righteousness and true what? Holiness. Holiness. Verse 24. Uh, verse 24. So why are they dead? Because they lack the spirit of God. Hmm. And then because they don't have the spirit of God, they cannot understand the word of God. And because they don't have the spirit of God, they cannot experience Christ's righteousness. So the church is going, when the church cannot experience the righteousness of Christ, it automatically goes back to the world. Oh. And they begin to take on the old man and the old, and the old ways, the natural, the natural sinful nature begin to overrule the spiritual. Yeah, my, my brother Patrick, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, please, because I, I know these two verses are very popular among the, this spirit of Sardi, Sardi church. Uh, chapter 2, verse 8. You, you read verse 8 and 9, please. And, and, and 10, too. Okay. okay Ephesians God. 2, 8 and 9 and 10. Yeah. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, uh -huh. not of works, lest any man should boast. Right. For we are his workmanship, okay. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So you see, the problem that I see in the spirit, in, in, you know, most of, in most, and I say in all, in most of the so-called Protestant churches is that they stop right there in verse 9, 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. So, no, no, by grace we are, we are saved, oh, I see. by faith. We don't, we don't have to be obeying the God, the law of God. Mm -hmm. I don't have to, I don't even have to think about it. You know, that means to be safe in disobedience. So not human works, we're not saved by human no. works, but by spirit-filled works. Right. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Because part of the grace working power in us is to uh, help us to become men and women that we obedience, sanctify, and to follow the, wor the word of God. Um, I'd like to read R Romans 8, 11. Okay, go ahead. Because it's the work of spiritual rebirth is much like the work of physical resurrection. Right. Revela Romans 8.11 says, But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Okay, so let's move along on this. Uh, there is another... So the. Oh. The Lord in every, what has the Lord had in every 
period of the church. So far, we saw in Ephesus, in, in uh, uh, Smyrna, uh, uh, Pergamos, uh, uh, Thyatira, and over here too, Revelation 3.4. Do you want to read it, please? Revelation 3.4. Um, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So what, what, what is the Bible, what is Jesus talking about over here during that time? There were a few that were holding on to Jesus, walking mm. in newness of life, and maintaining um, a close walk with God. So what is that telling us, a few? That means that the majority were not walking yeah. in Christ. Right. Yeah. Yes. I would like to bring out another book uh, point, and that's in the last part of verse 3. It says, mm -hmm. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So this shows that this church will last till Christ's second coming. This, the first three churches didn't have this warning, but the or, or, or didn't have that promise. Didn't have that warning or promise. Uh, yeah. And, but the Thyatiran church did in verse chapter two, verse twenty-five. But that which ye already have, hold fast till I come. Right. That shows that the Catholic Church was going to last till Christ's second coming. Right. The Protestant churches are going to last till, till Christ's second coming. And the remaining two churches will last till Christ's second coming. We're, we're getting close to the end of the yeah. end of the. But the Christian promise is what? What is the promise? They're giving to all of us. What is the promise? If we retain the faith in Jesus and follow growing in the grace mm -hmm. and become a man and woman uh, uh, as Paul mentioned in the book of Ephesians a, a, a new man a newness of life what, what is the promise given to us they're going to give us what was that in Romans you were talking about yeah the other one that you used yes, right yeah Romans yeah. That, that we will be raised up amen at Christ's second amen. coming amen amen that, isn't, isn't that the hope of glory that, that all of us as Christians should, should be you know, following or, or waiting for? Of course, right? Okay, so um, one more thing. On verse 5, chapter 3, again, the promise. Okay, a, a he that part overcometh, of the promise. He that yeah. overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, mm. but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Wow. What a beautiful promise. Amen. Right, okay. He's talking about the garments, white garments. What does that represent? White yeah. represents purity. Uh -huh, the and garments. The, and the raiment usually represents our character. Oh, man, right. Because uh, the righteousness of Christ. In Revelation 19.8, you have it right there. Right. It says here in Revelation 19.8, it, it says here, it says, And unto her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, and clean and white. For the fine linen, or the fine linen is clean and white, it represents is what righteousness of the saints. So this is talking about having the righteousness of Christ, and it's very important again because, like I said, this is what the church needed at that time, and at the same time, is righteousness by what faith, mm -hmm. because in First Peter four what, First uh, Peter four seventeen. I know, no, I'm sorry. In First Peter one seven, right. Right, it right. tells us that that the trial of your faith though it be what. More precious, More than, precious gold. than gold, though it be tried with what? Fire. Fire. And so we find here that faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing, Hearing by yeah. the word of God. Right. So this is us obeying the word of God through faith in his righteousness. Amen. Now, it says in here, I will not blot out, blot out the name from the book of life. What, in, what is what Jesus wants to blot out? He wants to blot sin us. out. In Hebrews 8.10, the Bible right. tells us again, the Bible says in Hebrews 8, 10, and this is the covenant I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I'll be, he says, I'll put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts, and I'll be them a God, and they shall be them a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness. Now, right. how merciful will he be to our unrighteousness? He says, their sins and their iniquities will I remember what? No more. No, no, no more. more. But to remember your sins and iniquities no more means that he's going to blot them out. In Isaiah 43, 22, the Bible tells us something. By Isaiah 44, 22. I'll use that one for a minute. Isaiah okay. 44, 22. Look what the Bible says God's going to do because it's the same covenant. Okay. 44, 
22 says this. Notice this. The Bible says here, um, it says here, okay, no, 43.22. No, 44.22. I'm got it. All right, here we go. Okay, Notice very carefully. It says here, I have blotted out what? There's as a, a thick, thick cloud, thy transgressions. Wow. And as a cloud, thy sins. Wow. So the purpose here is to blot out sins. But the blot out of sin is pointing to the Day of Atonement. Right. Amen. So therefore, the Day of Atonement had not come in the days of the Church of Sardis. Right. But it was soon to come, and God was warning them that unless he found their works perfect, unless they received his righteousness, they were not going to be able to have their sins blotted out. But if they would overcome, to him to overcome it, will I grant, he says here, I will, I will not, I, I will, not. I will what? To him that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out no. the book of life. Right. But for the name to come up in the book of life indicates a time of judgment must come on the church. Amen. And, and the book of Acts 3.19? Right. Repent, Peter was talking about that. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. They had just experienced Passover and then Pentecost. Peter thought the Day of Atonement was right at hand. Right. And he said, repent and be converted that your sins be blotted out. So, in order for us to retain but, our name mm -hmm. in the Book of Life, our sins need to be blotted out. Yes, and there's, a, and there's an opposite to that because the Bible <laughs> says in Revelation 13, 8, and all that dwell on the earth shall worship him whose names are not found written in the Book of Life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Right. Uh, we will see in the same uh, chapter 3 of Revelation a faithful church that will come out right after the Reformation. And that is uh, Revelation 3, 7. Can you read it please quickly, my brother? And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Mm. I know thy works. Here is the sixth time Jesus says, I know thy works. Mm -hmm. Every church he says, I know thy works. Right, right, right. Okay, so why don't we do this? We're going to pick up on that. Unfortunately, my time is up. And I just, because we're going to see that Jesus always will be raising up a church, trying to bring humanity into that experience. In, instead of blotting out our name out of the book of life, he wants to keep your name and my name, all of our names, in the book of life. And, but there, was, there is a church that is supposed to be doing this, bringing this message out to the world. May God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.